All right, what's up? We're going to talk uh, today um, about um, a concept that's kind of uh, um, sort of actually pretty confusing. Um, it's hyperkalemia versus hypokalemia. Um, the reason why it's confusing is honestly just first of all it is confusing and secondly um, it's not really explained too well um, in class uh, unfortunately and a lot of a lot of students get very uh, tripped up on it um, we're just gonna break it down and make it super uh, simple um, and we're gonna I'm gonna sort of show you why everything sort of is so you don't have to just straight up remember it, it it'll make it a lot easier to conceptualize sort of what's going on um, the uh, first thing though is before we start um, so hyperkalemia, okay? So what are your clinical presentations for hyperkalemia going to be? They're going to be like muscle weakness and fatigue and, and stuff like that, right? Okay. Hypokalemia. So what are your clinical manifestations going to be for hypokalemia? It's going to be muscle weakness and fatigue. It's going to be the same exact, same exact thing. So that's a reason why um, it confuses a lot of people, and that's also a reason why on the exam you can't really just look for those buzzwords like muscle weakness and fatigue and stuff, because they're going to show the same clinical presentations. You kind of have to look a step further and see what's happening on like a micro level to sort of figure out um, what's actually happening uh, with the patient. Um, so anyways, uh, we're going to break it down, and we're going to talk about this really quickly, and um, we're going to show you why this is all happening. All right, so first of all, let's talk about hyperkalemia. All right. Okay, so hyperkalemia is a state in which you have too much or an excess of uh, potassium in your ECF. So all this stuff that we're going to talk about, whether it's hyperkalemia, hypokalemia, hypernatremia, which is with sodium, um, or uh, hyper potonic, osmotic, all that stuff, anything that they're talking about is going to be in relation to the ECF. So they're going to be talking about what the ECF is in uh, in relation to uh, your the inside of your cell. So this is going to be like this moving forward um, in FTM and CPR and everything like that. Anytime you see any of these hyperkalemic, hypernatremic, blah, 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 whatever it might be, it's always talking about your ECF, your extracellular fluid. So when you get that straight, you can move on to the next step, which is basically, as we said, hy uh, hyperkalemia is going to be increased uh, potassium in your ECF, right? And what it's going to lead to is an excessively depolarized state. at rest. So at your resting membrane potential, you're going to be at a higher, more depolarized state. We're going to explain that in a second. So basically, what does that mean? Uh, it's going to also lead to, as we said, muscle weakness and fatigue as a result of this depolarized state. So what does this mean? So if you look at your action potential graph, right? Let's say this point right here is zero. And let's say this point right here is your normal action potential. So this is at rest, this is your normal. If you are hyperkalemic, you're going to be higher up on this graph because you're going to be at a more this is hyperkalemic, you're going to be at a more depolarized state. So if you're having a hard time sort of conceptualizing this, what does it mean? What does it mean to be in a more depolarized state, right? Well, let's look at this and see where on this graph is depolarization occurring? Right here, right? Depolarization, as we always think about it, you know, you get depolarization and then you come back down with repolarization. It's the same sort of concept. Whatever the sodium channels and everything that we already talked about, we already know um, happen, this portion right here of the graph is depolarization. So if you're higher up on the graph to begin with, you're at a depolarized state to begin with. And the reason why this is talking about the resting membrane potential, if you remember, what is the ion that's usually going to set your resting membrane potential at whatever it's going to be, whether it's negative 80 or negative 50 or whatever it is, it's going to be potassium, right? Potassium is going to be the most permeable ion, thus it's going to set your resting membrane potential. And that is why whenever you have an excess of potassium in your ECF, you're going to be at a depolarized state. All right, so now let's break it down in another way to make it um, a little bit uh, even easier to understand. 
And the best way to do this is to actually look at what's going on with the Nernst equation. So this might be like the one like actual useful thing that the Nernst equation is for. Like the driving force stuff is kind of like super convoluted, but this is actually helpful. If you use the Nernst equation to sort of see what's happening, it makes it a lot easier to sort of conceptualize what's going on in this entire situation. So let's go ahead and do that. So if this is your normal cell, the inside of your cell, let's say, is the potassium uh, level is going to be 120. And then the outside of your cell, let's say the potassium level is 5. Okay. So if you do the Nernst equation for this, what you get is negative 60 over Z. In this case, Z is positive 1. And if you need a refresh on the Nernst equation, um, there's a driving force video that I posted about that. So go check that out as well. Um, uh, so it's going to be that log the in value, which is 120, over the out value, which is going to be 5. And you're going to end up with negative 82. OK, so that's your normal. So negative 82 is the value that you're going to get whenever you are normally at rest. OK, so now let's talk about a patient with hyperkalemia. So a patient with hyperkalemia, what that basically means, as we said, is they're going to have an increased potassium on the outside. The inside value is going to stay the same. But on the outside, let's say that their value now is moved up to 30. So let's go ahead and do, because it's increased on the outside, right? Let's go ahead and do the Nernst equation for that. And what we're going to get is going to be, everything else is going to be the same, except the out value now is going to be 30. You solve it out, and what you're going to get for this is going to be negative 36. Okay, so negative 36 is if you're in a hyper uh, kalemic state. Now let's go ahead and look at this on this side, right? Does this match up with our graph over here? It actually does because if you look at this, negative 36 is going to be that dashed line right there. And what that is, is it's actually closer to zero than 82 is. So if this is 82, if this is negative 82, negative, 80, uh, negative 36, sorry, would be higher up, meaning that it would be more depolarized. It's going to be increased depolarized at rest. And that's it. That's how you figure that out. And basically, um, you're going to have an increased depolarized at rest. And uh, what that means as far as, as, far as uh, this is concerned is it's going to cause an increase in action potential firing. Because you think about it, when are you doing depolarization? Like if you think back like, and you just take all this like, throw it away out of context and just put it into just like your general knowledge. Whenever you're getting depolarized, that means that action potentials are going to be firing. The reason why they're getting muscle fatigue is because action potentials are firing because they're in a higher, more depolarized state, which is happening too much. If it's happening too much, it's going to cause them to get fatigued because over time, you're basically just working your action potentials over and over and over, and it's just going to get tired. That's basically what this is saying here with hyperkalemia, and that's what's happening there. And that's it. Now let's talk about hypokalemia and see what the difference is. All right, so with hypokalemia, we're going to do it step by step and look at it the same way. But basically what you're getting with hypokalemia is a decrease in potassium in your ECF, right? So if you have less potassium in your ECF, it's also going to cause muscle weakness and fatigue and everything like that. Um, but what's going to happen as far as your um, uh, action potential graph is concerned is you're actually going to be hyperpolarized. Okay, so what your graph would look like if this was your zero point right here, this is your regular normal. Okay, so this is normal at rest. And this right here would be if you were, sorry, I shouldn't have drawn it like that, just sort of like that. 
Um, this right here is what you would be if you were hypokalemic, which means that you are hyperpolarized. And as we know, hyperpolarized is the opposite of being depolarized, right? One second. Yeah, so hyperpolarized is going to be the opposite of being depolarized, right? So basically, if you're hyperpolarized, you're going to be lower down on uh, your action potential graph than you would be if you were hypo, uh, or, um, or if you were depolarized, sorry. So anyways, let's look at this with the Nernst equation and see how it works out with this guy. All right, so as we said, the normal, we're not going to calculate it out because we already know what it is, but the normal we said was potassium is going to be 120 and potassium is going to be 5. We get our uh, nurse equation for potassium to be negative 82, right? Which is right here. This is the normal that we already found. Okay. Now, let's look at a patient who is hypokalemic. So a patient who is hypokalemic, what they're going to have is they're going to have a the same amount of potassium on the inside, but the potassium on the outside is going to be lower. Let's say it's going to be 1 now, okay? So if you plug this into the nurse equation, the z value is going to be 1. It's going to be the same thing. The log is going to be in, which is going to be 120, over out, which is going to be 1 now. And you're going to be left with a uh, value of 100, or negative, negative 125. Okay. Now, let's take a look at this on the other graph, right? Let's just flip it right over to the other graph. Negative 125, does that match up? Yeah, it does. Because negative 125, this is 0. This is negative 82. Negative 125 is going to be even lower, which means it's going to be hyperpolarized, which is actually, that is the correct answer. That's what we're looking for in the case of hypokalemia. Um, so what, what will this uh, do as far as um, the clinical presentations? Why are they going to show the same signs, right? Well, if you are hyperpolarized, that means that you are not depolarized. That also means that you're probably not becoming depolarized as well. So what that means is that your action potentials are actually not firing as much. If your action potentials are not firing as much, what's happening is that over time you're going to get muscle weakness and fatigue because basically your muscles or your, uh, your uh, neuromuscular, everything is just not being used. It's just nothing is firing, nothing is working, and it's just going to become fatigued because of that. On the other case, what was happening is because you were firing too much because you were constantly depolarized in the case of hyperkalemia, then you just kept getting the action potentials over and over, um, getting uh, uh, too much, and that's, that, that's what was causing the fatigue in that case. So two different reasons for the same thing. I'll move out of the way if you want to take a picture of this or anything, um, screenshot. Um, but that's what you would see with hypokalemia instead. The last thing, though, is that if you can't remember this for whatever reason on the exam, I mean, there's a lot of uh, kind of steps and you gotta kind of have to think through it. Um, if you think about it this way, if you are hyperkalemic, you're going to be higher up on the action potential graph. So it's going to be up here, right? But if you are hypokalemic, you're going to be lower down on the graph, which is actually hyperpolarized. So hypokalemia is going to cause hyperpolarization, while hyperkalemia is going to cause depolarization, but they're both going to show the same clinical symptoms at, at the end. So basically, that's how that's going to break down. Um, other than that, that's really it with this. Um, I wouldn't think about it too much other than that um, because uh, it's it's kind of a very convoluted um, subject and you get way more into it whenever you do um, like CPR and even like in, in like term two and stuff like this. This is just kind of um, as far as like FTM is concerned, this is really all you need to know about this. Um, but if you have the general idea down and you can understand kind of what's going on and like break it down, um, that's going to be super helpful as far as like answering a lot of the questions. So um, yeah, anyways. Hopefully that helped. Thanks, guys. And uh, yep, that's it.